Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dimitr Krustiv Jimmy and in this short tutorial I'm going to show you how you can easily create a daylight setup in an interior scene. As you can see I've already opened my scene and I have this uh, the inside of a building but if I take a look through my perspective camera you'll be able to see that this is just a simple building with uh, a bunch of windows and I want to create this daylight setup inside of it. Now uh, if I render out straight away you'll see that I get this image and this is the image illuminated by the default lights in the scene. Now the first thing I need to do if I want to create a daylight setup is to create my V-Ray Sun and Sky system. The way we do this in Maya is by going to the render settings dialog. In the V-Ray tab we have V-Ray Sun and Sky rollout where I can just create my sun and sky. The V-Ray Sun and Sky, sun and sky system allows me to efficiently uh, simulate a daylight illumination in a scene and uh, the sun is a simple direct light that has a very very uh, bright intensity and uh, based on its position in the sky it creates uh, this procedural texture in my environment uh, called the V-Ray sky. Now I have placed my sun as you can see uh, this is its direction and now again I'm going to hit render and we'll see the result. Okay so uh, what you can immediately see that we now have our default lights disabled obviously and we get this very very bright um, spots here when the windows are and then everything else is black. Now the reason that everything else is black is because we don't have any GI in the scene and the reason we get these bright bright spots is uh, because uh, we basically have the very sun which is very very high intensity and uh, what we get here is this over bright colors in the, uh, in the sky. So, uh, first I want to add some light into my scene and to do this I'm going to enable the GI. Now for interior scenes I would always use my Radiance map as a primary engine and a light cache as a secondary. This is because this combination is perfect for this case uh, uh, when we have interior lighting. Now, uh, for the moment I just want to create those uh, test renders. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set up some low settings for the GI so that uh, I get a quick rendering and I don't have to wait every time I make want to make a test rendering. So I'll set the low preset for my Radiance map and then I'll just leave the light cache to its default values. Now when I hit render, uh, you'll see first the light cache. Obviously I need to render from my um, camera. Okay. Now you can see that we get uh, some light into the scene and uh, it still looks pretty dark and we still get those uh, bright uh, parts thing here. So what I want to do in this case is I want to select my camera and go to attributes V-Ray and add the physical camera attributes. I have actually added those previously but I had them disabled so you can see now uh, how they work. When I check this checkbox uh, this normal uh, standard Maya camera becomes a V-Ray physical camera and the very physical camera is created in such a way that it uh, simulates all the settings and uh, capabilities of a real world physical camera. And you can see that it actually added this exposure correction where we can see some of the sky in the environment and we can see it's blue. And we also don't get those very very bright uh, areas here. So uh, obviously this is uh, too dark and if you take a look at the settings of the uh, physical camera you'll see that we have things like um, F number, shutter speed, ISO, all of these uh, settings control the brightness of the final image the way they work in a real physical camera. So uh, I'm more familiar with the ISO and for interior scene I'll probably use something between 400 and 800. So I'm going to increase the ISO and uh, we'll see the result. As you can see uh, the image becomes a little bit brighter and then uh, we start to get this overexposed areas here. However, I think um, I can go a little bit higher with the ISO and let's try it again. And now we'll see that we were able to add a little more light into the scene. However, uh, I can continue doing this and uh, I'll keep adding more and more light to the scene because uh, my film will become more and more sensitive. Uh, but the thing is that we get those uh, very very bright areas here where the sky is and once again this is because of its brightness. So there's a couple of things that I can do 
and uh, they all take place in the color mapping options. So I'm going to bring out the render settings and I'm going to go to V-Ray and color mapping and then I'll switch the color mapping type from linear multiply to HZ exponential. This way V-Ray will add this, HZ, uh, this exponential curve to all my colors and it will bring them down so that no colors are uh, above uh, one and they're not over bright. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, enable the gamma 2.2 um, so that uh, I get more light into the scene, the scene will become brighter as a whole and I'll also enable the linear workflow. Now when I hit render uh, you'll see the result, we'll get more light into the scene, it will be as a whole brighter but we'll not get those overexposed areas here. Now it's pretty obvious that we have some issues with the GI and mainly this is because uh, I lower the set the settings quite a bit, uh, but uh, this can be fixed in a later stage. Now, what I want to do now is uh, play a little bit with this very sharp um, shadows here, and I want to make them a little bit softer to make it more realistic. So to do this, I'm going to create my sun, uh, select my sun, and then I'm going to find the size multiplier. I'll try with something like 10, and uh, let's see how soft shadows we get. Now I have a feeling that this is going to be too soft, but let's see. Yeah, this is uh, this is obviously too much, so I can try and decrease it a little bit. Let's try five. And uh, as you can see, I'm using the V-Ray frame buffer, uh, just a little sideway thing. Uh, to enable it, you need to go to the V-Ray common and uh, say that you want to use the V-Ray uh, VFB with this checkbox here. Now this allows me to actually use this render region option and just render this small part here. And this is very soft again, so I'm going to change the size multiplier to two. And I think that would be perfect. Okay, now uh, those look much better, I think, a little bit softer. And now uh, what we can see is that we don't get a good illumination in this area and if we check out the scene uh, from my perspective view you see that uh, I have a bunch of windows and those windows are actually uh, the ones that should cast the shadow actually the light is coming from those windows and uh, it's coming from the environment through the windows and it should create the shadows and this is a very hard thing to create for any uh, rendering engine. Now um, I want to go back to the perspective view. So what I have done is uh, I have created this layer that has all these V-Ray lights and added this up basically to save a little bit of time uh, because it takes some time to adjust them and what I did is that uh, I placed them outside of each window and these are very rectangular lights you can do create them by going to create lights uh, very erect light and those uh, have to be enabled first so I'm going to enable one now uh, I have all of them being instances of one another those uh, on the roof are instances of each other and then those on the windows are also instances so that I can control them uh, with just a single light and uh, I'll make sure that this light is enabled and then I'll make sure that this light has this skylight portal checkbox enabled uh, what this does is that it turns the light from a normal standard v light to a, a skylight portal which basically makes it much easier for V-Ray to create um, the GI effect that we want uh, in my scene. So what these lights do is that uh, they shine into the scene with the same uh, color and intensity as the environment between them but they don't add any additional light into the scene. So uh, let's render once again and we can see the result. to render the whole scene. So, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, we get a lot of noise into the scene. And this is because right now we're tracing a lot of uh, direct light and tracing those uh, area lights creates this noise. Uh, 
uh, but this can be easily fixed in the final image and uh, actually I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, create it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, make sure that I use a higher settings for my GI. So first of all I'm going to set a high preset for my radiance map. And then I'm going to increase uh, the subdivisions for my white cache to uh, something like 1000. Then uh, I'm going to play a little bit with the image sampler. Up till now I was using the adaptive subdivision and the reason for this is that it's very quick for preview renderings. But for the final render I want to switch to adaptive DMC and play a little bit with its settings. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to increase the uh, maximum subdivisions to something like 10. So this way uh, I'll be tracing more anti-aliasing rays. And you'll see that I have this lock threshold to DMC sampler threshold. This means that I need to go to my settings and uh, adjust this uh, adaptive threshold here. So I'm going to decrease it. And this will uh, not only affect uh, the rendering and all, all the anti-aliasing, but all the ray tracing in my scene. So in the end I'll get a much higher quality uh, image. And uh, I'm going to hit render and I'm going to pause the recording to save a little bit of time. Okay, so this is my final image and uh, it looks pretty nice. You can see we get uh, these nice sharp shadows here. But there are a couple of things that I noticed. First of all, I think uh, that I can bear to make this image a little bit brighter. And uh, the other thing is that I get a little bit of darkness in the corners. Now this darkness is called vignetting and it is a feature of the real world uh, cameras. They create this uh, actually unwanted effect. But since the very physical camera simulates the real world camera perfectly, it also creates the vignetting. And uh, to get rid of those, I want to uh, disable the vignetting here in the very physical camera. And uh, to make the image brighter, I actually want to increase the ISO a lot. So once again, I'm going to hit render. And uh, once again, I'm going to pause the recording until I finish the rendering. Okay, uh, so my rendering is complete. And as you can see, the image looks much better now. I don't have the dark edges here. Uh, as a whole, the image looks a little bit better, a little bit brighter. And I still get the nice illumination from the environment. Now, uh, this completes this uh, tutorial. And once the lighting is done, you can move on and uh, deal with your materials. Well, uh, this is the end of it. Uh, I'm Dimitar Kostov Jimmy, and I thank you for watching.